Today, it isn't enough for luxury makers just to add leather and a few bits of technology to their vehicles. They're having competition from both the other luxury vehicles in the market, but also the consumer brands are pushing hard into this space, making their vehicles more luxurious than cars from 10, 15 years ago. That's why a vehicle like this 2021 Lincoln Aviator Reserve needs to go above and beyond and have that niche to make it worthwhile to buy because there are so many options out there you need to really want this in order to buy it. And that's what Lincoln has been doing. That's why we're so excited to feature these cars because it isn't just putting a couple nice features in here, making a badge that might make you pay a little bit more for its consumer counterpart. They've gone above and beyond to make something different in the marketplace. One of the major complaints that we hear pretty much all the time when we're featuring new luxury cars is they're too sport oriented. They're putting too much emphasis on performance. The rides are harsh. The engines are powerful and less efficient. The idea is to make them as quick as possible and sporty and that's kind of what the definition of luxury is today but not for Lincoln. They want to make something that is comfortable, quiet, relaxing to drive, and that is a consistent philosophy across all of their vehicles that they're featuring. Now, it's important to talk here in 2021 that this is now an SUV-only company. They have completely killed off the only two cars that they were selling, the Continental and the MKZ, which we actually talked about last year, thinking they might bring it back as the Zephyr, but those are both dead in the North American market. We are left with four crossovers and SUVs to fill the Lincoln portfolio. Now we have featured the Aviator before, but because we're featuring it again at the beginning of spring, we want to spend some time to talk about why you would consider this vehicle. Powered by Lincoln's twin-turbo V6 engine, produces 400 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque, and uses a 10-speed transmission. Here in Canada, you can pretty much only get it with all-wheel drive, but in the States, you can have a rear-wheel drive or the four-wheel drive system that we have here. Pricing for this, it's quite a bit, but about $85,000 Canadian, about $74,000 in the US, and you cannot configure the same way in the US as we have here. Slightly different packaging. But this is a vehicle that you're buying not because you want to go fast, not because you want the sportiest thing out there. Maybe you do want to blend in a little bit, but you still want to have a comfortable, exquisite ride to be able to show up in style. I want to take this on the road. I want to talk about why I like this vehicle so much and why I'm driving it a year later with no real changes, aside from the fact that we've got a different color here today, not that it matters for you. So let's hop in and see what the Lincoln Aviator has to offer and why this is still one of my top picks if you're looking for a luxury SUV. Yes, this is a 2021 with pretty much no changes from the one that we drove before. In fact, it's actually pretty much the same build that we drove before. It doesn't have the monochromatic exterior packaging. We still don't have the black labels up here in Canada, which is a bit of a bummer. And I actually was supposed to be driving the plug-in hybrid. However, they had to send that one off to the other region for the media fleet here in Quebec, which means I have this instead. But so far, I have enjoyed this just as much as I did last year when I drove it, because there is so much to like about Lincoln. They know what they want to do, and I think that's the most important thing when it comes to any vehicle brand these days, not just a luxury-oriented one, but you want to have a reason to exist. We talk about that a lot, a raison d'etre, and that is what Lincoln finally figured out. It took them a long time to figure it out, but they're there, and they know they want to be taken seriously as a luxury brand, but not for performance, not to have a sport division like everybody else has, but to be the comfort option. If you want something that's gonna work, get you there comfortably, get you there in a quiet manner, relaxing experience, then Lincoln is the way to go, whichever vehicle you pick from them. And that's what you get with the Aviator. The fact is this is a rear wheel drive SUV, which is fantastic. We're in a world where everybody is looking to cut costs, make their vehicles more affordable, use the same platform for cars, boats, trains, everything's gonna be on the same platform in the future. But this is a rear wheel drive platform, which is great because it wasn't with the previous generation for the Ford Explorer. It was a crossover. This is now what you want from a luxury vehicle. Can you feel it? 
Probably not, because you're driving around the power distribution on this is very good. It splits everything pretty evenly front to back. There are different drive modes, so you can have a slightly better you know, fuel economy experience or performance experience. I usually keep this in normal, but if you do put it in Excite, it does change things up a little bit. You can feel a little bit more throttle response. And that's, yeah, maybe 50% power. I'm not giving it a whole lot of gas and I have zero issues getting up to speed. This is the type of vehicle you wanna buy for those who just wanna drive. You're not necessarily going to be going on a twisty mountain road with this, or you could, but you're not gonna be craving that sort of experience. This is a vehicle for people who need to get to work, they have things to do in their life, they wanna do it comfortably, and they don't wanna to have to deal with a sporty, harsh suspension. And that's what I really like about this. Very smooth, very linear performance when you need to get up to speed. And this is kinda of what I want from a luxury vehicle. If I want a performance vehicle, I'll go somewhere else. But I sometimes just like to relax, and that's what this does. I'm comfortable. Seating position is great with the perfect position seating. Interior road noise is good as well. Now, I would have liked to have tried out the massive 28-speaker Revel Ultima 3D system, but we're just using the basic, <laughs> basic 14-speaker system here, and it sounds great. Everything about this works the way that I want it to. And the thing is, Lincoln might not be your cup of tea because they don't make those sporty vehicles. This might be more towards the older demographic. I can totally see that because I do see these on the road. I see the Aviator. I see the Corsair. I see the Nautilus. They sell pretty well. And I think that it is a smart move for Lincoln to get rid of the cars. I, I love the Continental. I would have really enjoyed to drive the MKZ Hybrid, but that's the direction the industry is moving and everybody just wants an SUV. So why not focus on that a little bit ahead of the game? Cadillac is still committed to cars, which is great, but I guess it makes sense for Lincoln to say, listen, we're gonna slim our portfolio down and make things that people are gonna wanna buy. Because I think the worst thing that could happen is for Lincoln to disappear altogether. I think Ford missed a huge opportunity getting rid of their Mercury division, the sort of mid-range between Ford and Lincoln. And some of you watching might not even know what that is. Maybe they weren't sold in your market or you're just too young to really remember what a Mercury was, but they had the potential there to keep that brand on because that's kind of where a lot of these manufacturers are moving now. They want to be in a premium space, not quite luxury, but above the consumer world. So Lincoln now has to step in to do both. They have to be able to cater to the lower end premium market as well as go up to the full out luxury stuff that we'd like to see. So they're doing both and I think they've done a very good job with it when it comes to the Aviator. The ultimate takeaway from this vehicle is going to be the comfort. If you're looking for something that will fit your family comfortably, quietly, with the relaxation that you would really want out of a vehicle, this is the way to go. I would not consider the Cadillacs, the Mercedes, or the BMWs because they're just too sport oriented now. And there are people out there who don't want that. This doesn't need to be the vehicle for all people. This just needs to be the vehicle for a small section of the buying market who don't want all of the sportiness. That's what this does, and it does it incredibly well.